Hey everyone, my name is Louis and I'm a customer success associate here at Xana. And today I'm going to guide you through some common procedures when handling content like images or files within your application. We are going to explore standard steps for tasks such as uh, uploading a profile picture, uh, renaming a file in the metadata, or implementing checks to avoid uh, duplicate uploads. To start, it's very important to understand how file uploads work inside Xano. When you upload a file to your storage, what is stored in the database is the metadata associated with that file and not the actual file itself, which goes to a different bucket. When you access the database view, you have a preview of the file, which is a visual representation for better data management. But under the hood, in the database, what you actually have is an object containing the file metadata and the file URL. And you also have the ability to check out all the files that you have uploaded to your storage by going to the left navigation bar under library, public files, or private files, in case you have already added this feature to your plan. And the first flow that we're going to analyze is uh, updating a profile picture. So what we have here as input is the file resource type that is going to receive the file. And you can find here under storage, file resource. And there are basically two steps. The first one is getting the record from the user. And we're picking the record based on the ID that is provided in the token to make sure that only uh, this user is updating his or own profile picture. And the second step is a conditional uh, that's checking whether or not there is already a profile picture in the database. And the condition here that I'm using is that the get user, that is the variable here returning the user, uh, we're accessing profile picture field using dot notation and we're using the get filter to uh, access the URL. So what the get filter does is provide standard value in case this path is not there. So if the URL is not uh, there in the profile picture subpath, the value will be null. And if no equals to no, it means that there is no profile picture in the database. So what we're going to do, we're going to upload the image to storage and create its metadata. And uh, we're going to do this using the create image metadata function that you can find here under file storage, create image metadata. And the value uh, is the input that is sending the picture. So after uploading this to your storage, creating the metadata, we're going to update the user record with this new file metadata. If there is already a profile picture, so the first thing that we're going to do is delete the existing picture because it's not interesting to keep a file that's not used anywhere in the application. After that, we're going to repeat the steps that we did before. We're going to upload the image to storage, create the metadata, and add the record uh, with the return of this variable. So let's see what it looks like in the database. So here we have a user with a profile picture. And this profile picture is number one. So it's already there. You can also see here in the storage. So now let's test. So choose the file and then we run. Now let's check in the database. We refresh. And here we have the second picture. If you go to the storage and also refresh, you see that the picture one is not there anymore. It has been deleted. And the picture two has uh, been uploaded to storage and it's metadata. It's already stored in the database. Now let's check out the second flow, which is changing the name. The inputs that we have here is the ID because uh, we want to modify a certain uh, record and we're going to be pulling the record based on the ID that will be provided. And the other input is a text field that I'm calling new file name. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, just to provide the text that will be the new file name. And there are basically three steps. The first one is get the record based on the ID provided. And here we create two variables. The first one 
uh, the goal is to pick the file extension. I'm getting the current file name and I'm splitting the name and using the dot separator. And then I'm picking the last part with has the extension. It's not interesting to provide a chance uh, to the user to update the whole file name. So it's interesting to offer the chance to just uh, update the file name. And the second variable here is the new object. Remember that we have an object with the metadata. So we're updating just one key called name. And the value of this name is the input. And we're going to be concatenating the extension. And the last step is to add the record with this new object. So let me show you what it looks like in the database. So in the record number one, we have a file here that is an image and it's called xeno.gpg. So what we're doing here now is uh, getting, is providing the ID of the record. That's number one. And let's say new name. And, and when you run, we see that here, that's already pulling the record from the database. We have new name dot GPG. If we go back to the database and then we refresh and we see that we have the new name already updated there. And last but not least, let's check for duplicates. So we have two approaches here. The first one is check for duplicated name. Uh, which is more limiting because uh, we need to have the files with the same actual names. Uh, but let me show you what steps are. And for this flow, I'm using two inputs, uh, file name and extension that is provided separately. And in this variable, I'm concatenating them. So the file name and extension using a dot. And after that, I'm querying all records associated with the user's ID and if the record file name equals to the file name concatenated variable that is concatenating the file and the extension. So basically, uh, if we have records in this query, it means that there is already a file with that name in the database. So if there are no records in the query, then move on. So everything that is below here, uh, we will run. If it's not, uh, we're going to have this message that the file name already exists. So basically, if the query or records is empty, is equals to true, then we can move on uh, to the next steps. If it's not, we have this message. So let's try. Now that we have a new name, let's see, new name dot job. GPG. If we run, the file already exists. If we try to Xeno GPG, there's no file in storage with this name. And now I'm going to see the second approach, which is checking for duplicate files, even if they have different names. So we have a few steps here. And the first step is getting the actual file from the input. And to do that, we need, um, function called get file resource data that you can find here under file storage and get file resource data. Because at this point, we don't want to work with the metadata any longer when we want to work with the actual file data. And after that, we're going to query uh, all the records uh, of the database. So we're going to be querying the records associated with the user ID and that the column is populated. So let me show you what it looks like in the database. So we have these records uh, with this user ID associated to them. And here we have a column of files and we have a few records that are populated and some records that are not populated. And we don't want to return those. That's why I'm using here in my custom query, the user ID that's associated with uh, auth ID that's coming from the token and records files that are different from null. It's very important to limit the number of files that's returning from this query because uh, it could be very uh, resource intensive if you're going to compare uh, for duplicates in many records of the database at once. So after that, I'm going to create a variable that I'm naming data. 
which is just uh, an empty array that we're going to store all the data uh, of the files in this array. And after that, we're going to loop through all the records returning from this query. And we're going to pull the actual file from each of the records uh, from this loop. And so we are going to also use the get file resource data, similar to what we did in input. And then we're going to push uh, this variable here to the end of this array. So we're going to update uh, this array called data with the existing data and pushing the file resource that we got here to the end of this array. So at this point, we have this array data already populated with the file resources that we got from the database. And now we're going to actually search for duplicate files. And to do that, we're going to use an array has an element uh, function that you can find here under data manipulation, array has any element. And the array that you're going to iterate through is data that at this point is already populated, as I mentioned. Um, and the condition is that this, which is each item of this array, equals the file resource input, that is the actual file resource that I'm getting from the input, dot data. And what's returning from this function is a Boolean, which means that if we have an element like this one stated in a condition, it will return true. If we don't, it will return false. So let's take the last look at the database. So now that we have here a new name.jpg that we saw before renaming it, that was xeno.jpg. So let's try to uh, compare uh, that file to see if uh, it will return as true that already exists in the database. So let's test it. Choose file, xeno. If we run, it's true. So we already have this file in the database. So let's try this Xeno2, which is a different file. False. So we don't have this file in the database. And this is how we implement uh, a check to avoid duplicate uploads. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about a platform, you can access our awesome community at community.xeno.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tutorials like this and see you in the next video.